in your Bible, I ask you to open it with me to Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. We'll be uh, studying verses 11 through the end of that chapter. Hebrews chapter 5. As we continue our, our study on following Jesus, being disciples who make disciples. And the writer of Hebrews, he is dealing with a church that has lost its fire. It's lost its care for fulfilling the mission that God had given them. They'd kind of watered it down some. <laughs> I tell you, they weren't getting with it too well. You know, you found it by now in your Bibles. Would you stand in honor of God's Word? Let's read it together. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11, it says, Concerning him, we have much to say, and it is hard to explain, since you have become dull of hearing. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you have need again for someone to teach you the elementary principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food, for everyone who partakes only of milk is not accustomed to the word of righteousness, for he is an infant. But solid food is for the mature, who, who because of practice have their senses trained to discern good and evil. Therefore, leaving the elementary teaching about the Christ, let us press on to maturity, not laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God of instruction about washings and laying on of hands and the resurrection of the dead in eternal judgment. Let us pray. Father, You are awesome and mighty. We pray that we will hear Your Word and that You will speak right to our hearts in such a way that it will change our lives, Father. Let us be found yielding to your command, to your word, to your guidance, to your direction. We pray these things in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. So following Jesus always comes down to making disciples. But again, as I said, the writer of Hebrews was dealing with a church that had lost its fire. It had lost its desire to push on and continue being a disciple. You see, he's not talking about loss of salvation here. No, he's talking about disciples who have lost, who have chosen to decide not to care, to press on to maturity. Too many people think, well, I accepted Jesus. That's good enough. I joined the church. That's enough. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. Giving your life to Jesus, choosing to follow Jesus, means we turn everything else in the world aside to follow Him first and foremost, no matter what. No matter what. But sadly, just like this, you know, you hear some people say, oh, back in the old days we didn't have these problems. Folks, can I tell you something? Here is, here is the writer of Hebrews writing in the first century or so about a, to and about a church that has lost its fire. Ain't nothing new under, under the sun. The things that are happening in this country don't ever be fooled. They happened in Rome. They're happening everywhere else. Because as long as there's evil, there will be sin. And until Jesus comes back, there will be no difference. It is our job though, our responsibility, to go forth and tell the world about Jesus, about the better way, about salvation. We are called to be disciples, living, breathing, active followers of Christ, not just UFOs. And no, I ain't talking about those strange things that Jimmy Carter thought he saw 100 years ago. Young folks, that was for your parents. Okay? I'm not talking about that kind of stuff. You know good and well it had something to do. You ever notice that it's usually people out in the woods smoking something? 
I'm just saying. Okay? All right. So we'll just leave that alone. But now let me, let me help you out, though. See, Paul was dealing, or not Paul, but the writer of Hebrews was dealing with some UFOs. And you're going, what in the world do you mean by that, preacher? Go ahead and pull out that bulletin. You got one, right? Go to the notes page. You need to write this down. Or, or as my English teacher in 10th grade would say, jot this down. Okay? All right? You jot it down or you will rue the day. Yeah, there's one for you. SAT word. All right? Go ahead and write top to bottom UFO. UFO. Now, I hope this doesn't define you or, or fit your circumstances with God. Okay? U stands for uninformed. Well, we'll get these cords figured out one day. Dylan's going to get us some carpets or something. It's not for decorations. It's so I don't kill myself. <laughs> um, uninformed. Freeloading. Observers. Uninformed. Freeloading. Observers. Let that sink in for a second. Uninformed, freeloading observers. Now I'm going to tell you right now, if you're not one of our regulars, I am so glad you're here. Okay? I promise you, come and sit here as long as we can have you. But it's my job to encourage every one of you, every single one of you sitting in this room, to be stirred into the service of the Lord Jesus Christ. To not just be one who was saved a long time ago, but to be one who is living a life of service and honor to God. That is what I'm called to do. That is what we're all sent forth to do. Don't be uninformed. Don't be freeloading. See, he was dealing with a group of believers. And, and he looks at them in verse 11 and he says, Concerning Him, we have much to say. And it's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. And it is hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. Now, if you've read the book of Hebrews, and I hope you have, what I find is, is most people have not read as much Scripture as they claim they have read, okay? Um, but he is sitting, it's, it's a deep book. It's full of beautiful images of who God is and talking about his character and how Christ came and did great and mighty and wonderful things. But he's gotten to the point, he's a little frustrated, and he says, but concerning him, I have much more to tell you. I want to tell you. Folks, you're not listening. You don't want to listen. You've kind of turned everything off. Folks, you need to understand this morning that being a disciple means that I am an active listener. Being a disciple means I am an active listener. My school teachers are like, I know what that is. I tell my kids that all the time. Now everybody, eyes on me. We're all actively listening to what I'm trying to say. Instead of automatically turning it off. Just turning it off. Oh, I've heard somebody preach on this before. I'm out. Oh, Sister Better, Sister What's-Her-Name's not here. She needs to hear it, so I'm not going to listen. Folks, God has called us to know Him more in every way. The God of the universe wants a personal and intimate relationship with you. He wants to know every part of your life. And when He is speaking, I'm going to be careful now. I'm going to say something. Say, when He is speaking, we must be listening and for you to say well i don't have to listen to that old preacher listen folks i'm going to tell you that everybody that stands in the pulpit and there's there's a handful that don't think this way but the vast majority of us our whole desire is to tell you exactly what god told us to tell you we don't want to add to it we don't want to leave anything left out we just want to tell you what god said and sit down and i'm here to tell you something i could give you a bed of roses I could tell you about all how God wants you to be rich and healthy and all of that stuff, but I'd be lying to you. Because that would be my message to make you happy instead of God's message to make you right. 
God has called us to be active listeners so that we may know Him more. I hate, I hate announcements. You want to know why I hate announcements? Because it subconsciously trains every one of you to, when you hear those announcements, you go, I ain't doing that. I ain't going on Facebook. I am not resharing that because that preacher told me to. Or, or you're going down the list. We're talking about, oh, by the way, just for fun, we, we're, for the kids, you're going to get promoted to your next class at the end in September. September 3rd, there you go. So I announced it, but most people, what they do is they check off, that's not for me, that's not for me. And you learn to say no to the pastor when he's just talking about stuff. And when we stop listening to the pastor, we stop listening to our Sunday school teacher, when we stop having our time of prayer and taking the time to listen to the living God, You have become dull of hearing. And you see, when you become dull of hearing, instead of being a disciple who is actively listening, you start to miss out, thing, miss out on things. You start to fall back on your walk with God. You begin to just following Baptist rules and doing things because you're expected to do, because you signed up to do it, instead of doing it because God said do it. Because when we lose our connection with God, which is listening, we lose the power of God's presence. We lose His empowerment to accomplish His purpose in our lives, which is being disciples who make disciples. I don't want you to be uninformed. I want you to listen. I want you to hear. And you see, if you're actively listening, and you've been walking with God, when a preacher tries to give you a plate full of bologna, you know how to shove it back. You see, a disciple must be an active listener. We've been called to be that kind of listener. Not like, not like husbands do when we're watching our football game, because I know the Cowboys started, and our wife's trying to tell us what, what she needs done. Okay? Uh-huh, dear. Uh-huh. No, not that. I'm talking about when you hit pause and you turn around and look in her eyes and say, yes, dear. Now, you may not do a thing, but you turned and listened actively. <laughs> hey, it's a start. I can't fix all you managers at once. It goes, all right, then, then let's move on. It says, <laughs> all right, for though, for though by, verse 12, for, for though by this time you ought to be teachers, you have again for someone, uh, you, you have need again for someone to teach you the elementary principles or the oracles of God, and you have come to need milk and not solid food. Not solid food. You see, a lot of people think they're mature Christians, but number one, they're not active listeners. They're, they're not faithful disciples. They're not, they're not being disciples. They may be saved, but they're not being saved because they're not actively listening. They're not growing in Christ. And one of those evidences is am I teaching others about my experience from Christ, my experience from God? Oh, I know. I know. I know. I'm in East Texas, so I've got I to I I clear this up some. All right? He's saying by now you are to be a disciple who makes disciples. For all are called to make disciples. Now, we all have different, different roles to play at times, but all of us have the ability to pour into another person's life everything we've been actively hearing from God. He didn't tell us these things so we could grab it and put it in a book, put a little lock on it and stick it in a drawer. He gave us this relationship, this knowledge, so that it could be shared with everyone. Think about it. He picked 12 men and one of them was kind of a loser and, and he changed the world. Y'all know Judas was a loser, right? Just checking because sometimes people don't read the Bible. Alright? He changed the world because what God told them, they told somebody else and they told somebody else. The reason you're here today, Christian, is because somebody told somebody about Jesus. It is that simple. You see... Being a disciple, 
Being a disciple means I'm making disciples. There is a necessary call to it. But he's talking further about the problems with immaturity within the church. Those UFOs, those uninformed believers. He says, verse 13, it says, it says, for everyone who partakes only of milk is accustomed to, it is not, get that, underline that, everyone who, everyone who partakes only of milk is not accustomed to the word of righteousness for he is an infant. But solid food is for the mature who because of practice have their senses trained to discern good and evil. You see, being a disciple means we're growing in our understanding of Christ. He's talking to a congregation who used to be faithful to Sunday school, if you will, or Bible study, whatever you want to call it, who used to be faithful to study God's Word. And when they were in the sanctuary hearing, the, well, they probably didn't have a big fancy sanctuary. They're probably sitting in somebody's living room most of the time. Maybe, maybe in a covered outside area. And folks, in our day, we, you, we need to be taking notes and growing deeper in Christ. Our understanding should be constantly growing. Look, just, just yesterday, um, we said goodbye to one of our, one of our, one of our most faithful members. And, and some of you visitors might have met him through the years. Rondy Kelly, he would be at that door. And he never met a stranger in his life. I praise the Lord for a man like that. And, and by the way, somebody's, not that we could be another Rondy Kelly, but the rest of us need to step up and start serving. Because I guarantee you, he's the difference between some of our guests coming in and feeling welcomed and loved and wanted to be here, and them turning around going, Psh, them First Baptist people, just a good guy. But here's the thing. Three older men spoke. Two of them, in some form of the word, are ministered. One of them, you know, Dave Glossop's daddy was, did a great job. And um, Rodney, uh, Jerry, Jerry Bernie. And, and these are older men. And, and, and when, when uh, David Glossop's father says, well, I've never preached this at a funeral. Well, I'm here to tell you something. That man has preached more funerals than I've preached sermons. Okay, on Sunday morning. That man knows what he's doing. And then another man steps up who is in his, man, is Jerry Bernie 80 yet or something? He's somewhere in there. Just a fabulous man of God. He's read, probably read the book of Hebrews more times than I have by far, more times through the Bible than I have at this point in life. And he stands before a congregation of people and he says, God showed me this passage and I've never read it before. I don't care how many times you've read one verse. God has a message for you. There is space for growth if those older men, those older saints can find more understanding in God's Word. Don't you think you can? I think the reason a lot of our reading time and study is so dry is because we don't put anything in it. Do you understand, folks? And Hey, I'm, I'm going to spank the sheep a little bit, so forgive me. Do you understand the reason we give you a Sunday school quarterly is so that you can be prepared for Sunday school each week? Oh, that Sunday school teacher, they're just not very good. They don't go very deep. It's because you didn't study the background. Because they've kind of got used to, I can study all this extra stuff, I don't get to share it. Because they're not ready and they're not prepared. That's old me. You want to grow in Christ. Being a disciple of Christ means going deeper. Growing in your knowledge of Him every single day. Too many folks. They just mail it in. It's all good. I got all this done. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. There is nothing. There ain't a meeting you need to go to. There's not an email you need to return. Text. There, there, is, there is not a television show, football game, practice that is more important than growing in your knowledge of Jesus Christ. Because I'll tell you one thing, one will lead to eternity, the other is temporal. It is temporary. It's kind of like those fireworks you kids buy every year. Just hand me a dollar and I'll burn it for you. 
I mean, good grief. And I was just as guilty at their age, so I can't say much. But man, anything other than a relationship with God is just that pointless. It'll pop. But tell me, how often do you just sit around and talk about, boy, I sure remember those firecrackers I fired off the other day. I have yet to have that conversation. Usually the conversation is, yeah, do you remember when it went up his pants leg and he run? <laughs> you know, being a disciple of Christ means I am growing in Christ. That means I'm coming to Bible study. That means I'm digging deeper. That means I'm taking notes. Even, even if somebody will say, I, I've had people say, preacher, you don't give me an outline. You know why I don't give you an outline? You're grown. You can write it yourself. I already wrote it. And then I threw it away, and then I wrote it again, and it changed ten times. I can't give you one. Sorry. The sermon changed from this morning to this morning. You get what I'm saying? Between services. It just does. It's what happens, okay? But we, we've got to be focused on these type of things. We've got to be dedicated to growing deeper in God. See, these folks, these folks had a knowledge of Christ. At one time, they were on fire about being disciples who made disciples. They were ready and they were equipped and they could get it done in every way. They were there. It's kind of like yesterday. I was out at the soccer field. And um, man, you're right. We definitely need that rug. Gonna drive me nuts. Um, these cords, it's blah, blah. Okay? But I'm out on the soccer field. And, and let me tell you about these soccer folks. Okay? Man... Everybody in that room played soccer growing up but me. All right? And they won't, after you go through all the lessons, you go out there and you got to practice them. And there's me. I got, we got a spry 50 year old, and he's definitely in better shape than I was, okay? And then you got two young guys, and you got old me. I'm out of shape, I'm fat, I'm bloated. It's right here. I wear loose shirts so it covers it up well. And it was too hot for me to wear the jacket or I really covered up. You go, man, you carry that weight well, Pastor. You know, I know that's what you're thinking. Okay, but... <laughs> listen, listen, real serious now. But you know, I got out there and I tried to run with those young guns. And I, I, man, I was a college athlete. I should be able to do all this stuff. It should pick up easy for me. I'm stumbling and bumbling and rolling all over the field like a goober because I have not been athletic in a while I haven't practiced do you want to know one of the reasons you struggle getting back into God's word you struggle going back into a Sunday school class you struggle taking notes on Sunday morning you struggle making changes to conform to the image of Christ in your life it's because you're out of practice and it starts one day at a time you know, if I, want to, if I want to be more athletic again, I'll get up and I'll run a block. And the next day I'll run another block. And the next week I'll run another block. And one day you look around and you go, wow, I'm in shape again. And I'm not stumbling and bumbling as bad around those young guys. Okay? If you go to Bible study, sometimes you go, man, those people out talk me. They know more. Some people are just loud and obnoxious and want to hear their own voice. Oh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Maybe not. Or am I? Don't worry about them. You are exactly where you are. And if you need to ask questions, don't feel like you're dumb. Ask the question, because that is what Sunday school is for. And a good Sunday school teacher is going to shut down the theologically uh, astute in the room to answer your questions to make sure that you are comfortable. So just to encourage you there. Listen, so, so we're talking about being a disciple. It means I, I'm an active listener. It means, means that, that I make disciples who make disciples. Being a disciple means that I'm growing and I, growing in my understanding of who God is. You see, being a disciple, though, also means that I am willing to be trained to give ever, being trained to make other disciples. Because you know what I've found? Is the average Christian has no clue how to make a disciple. Well, you pick your kids up and, and you drop them off on Wednesday night and if you're lucky, they bounce in the grass. You, you are some of those parents. Y'all do that at Awanas and those are little kids, man. 
By the way, new policy this year, you gotta stop, come in, and sign them in, and then you can't do that no more. We changed that. Sorry, we just can't afford something to happen to your kids, all right? So throwing that out there, side note. But listen, hey, gotta get it win while I can. But being willing, willing to make disciples. We don't know everything. And we need to grow in Christ. I have found that, that most parents have no idea how to equip their children to be disciples of Christ other than drop them off at Sunday school. And I have found that people who have sat in Sunday school classes for their whole life, it's not enough. Listen, I, let me give you some levels. Just showing up and coming to a regular worship service, great start. It'll get you going. It's a great introductory but you need to go to step two, class two. You need to go to Sunday school. That's where you get a little deeper into the Word. You get the fellowship and encouragement you need. But you see, folks, all of us need the next level as well. We need to have been discipled by another person and decide, so that we know how to disciple other people. Do you realize we offer this? I've got five guys that are trained and ready to go right now. They don't have anybody to disciple. I got others that are, that are working and they're at some point with their sons, uh, some ladies with other ladies at this one. I've only got two ladies, by the way. We will train you on how to make disciples. Listen to this last part of the passage. And it says in chapter 6, verse 1, it says, Therefore, leaving the elementary teaching about, about the Christ, let us press on to maturity, not laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works. And it goes on and on. The point is, being a disciple means I press on to maturity. I need to learn. I need to grow. God didn't call us to be uninformed, freeloading, oh, that said that, observers. And what do you mean by freeloading, preacher? And I'm going to give you this free. We're going to get into observing next week. So if you're not here next week, I know you were convicted and got mad. Just trying to ensure a crowd. Freeloading means... I take advantage of all the resources of the church, meaning I take advantage of the nursery, I take advantage of Awanas, I take advantage of the preaching, and I take advantage of the worship and, and the Bible studies, but I never give back in service. That's what it means to freedom. I hope you're not in that area. Some of you say, well, I give a check. Well, good. God also gave you two hands and a mouth and the ability to do other things. God has called us to follow Jesus by being disciples who make, di make disciples. Ask yourself this morning, am I listening to God actively? Am I making disciples? Have I ever been a part of that? And if you, if you say, no, I've never made a disciple, don't you think it's time to be trained? It might mean we take you through a bunch of books and you have to learn how. That's the way it works. But you know, there was this one man, he was a young adult. His name was Jesus Christ. And he discipled 12. And from those 12, he changed the world. Don't you think? What do you imagine the change would be right here in Maybank, Texas, Gun Barrel, Van Zandt County, wherever you live in this area? What kind of change do you think we would see if all of you and me got serious about making disciples? Because I'm going to tell you something. You know what happens? One to one becomes two. Two become four. And so I'm bad at math, so I'm not even going to try it. But y'all know what I'm talking about. The math is astronomical. Do you want to see change? So I ask you, are you, are you actively listening to God disciple? Are you making disciples? We can fix that. Are you growing deeper in Christ? We can help you with that. Are you ready to give it everything you got so you're not just one of those UFOs? And in our time of response, the altar will be open for those who just need to, maybe you just need prayer and time with God and recommit your life that way. Maybe, maybe you need to pray with me. I'll be right here. Maybe you're sitting here today and you realize the reason you've never made a disciple in your life, the reason you don't get this church thing that God is, that you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I'm going to tell you, right here, I can see people that can 
Will you come forward. I've got disciple makers right here. They will walk with you and they will sit and they will talk and share with you from God's Word what you need to know to be saved. And they will help you to understand what the process of discipleship is. Because it's a lifelong journey. It doesn't begin today and end tomorrow. But it goes forever. Let us pray.